is Catherine Lake over here, superintendent of the public schools. Madam superintendent. Thank you. Um, I'll begin by reiterating what I've, what I've uh, written and verbally articulated in the past. I'm not against charter schools, parochial schools, private schools, or home school. Each option represents an opportunity for students and their parents to choose an educational plan for their children according to their own individual opinions, desires, and beliefs. I object to the fact that their formation is based on the premise that local public school systems are ineffective underperforming and unresponsive to students and their needs, a theory that is offensive, abhorrent, and untrue. In case of the Lynn Preparatory Child School, I object to its establishment simply because it is illegal according to the Massachusetts regulations concerning charter schools. Granting a charter to the Lynn Preparatory Charter School is subverting the intent of the charter school regulations, 603 CMI section 1.04, part 6, paragraph F. I'll, instead of reading the paragraph for time, I'll just respond to three sections. The first sentence states, and I quote, private and parochial schools shall not be eligible for charter school status. This application is from the Hathaway School, a private school formerly housed in Lynn and now housed in Swampscott. The second part of the regulations states, and I quote, if members of the charter applicant group are on the governing board or management of a private or parochial school that plans to close or closes around the time of receiving a charter, it creates a rebuttable presumption that the private or parochial school is seeking charter status for the purpose of securing public funding. Contained in the charter application is clearly the question, do members of the applicant group currently operate or are they employed by a private or parochial school? Their answer is yes. Founding group members include Joanne Savitari, principal of the Hathaway School and proposed executive director of the proposed charter school, and Mark Hathaway, chief operating officer of the Hathaway School and proposed member of the founding board of directors. Last year, at a similar meeting to the one being held today, the Hathaway School's directors made it clear that the Hathaway School would close if the charter were granted and parents of their students would need to add their children's names to the lottery for the new charter school. The charter school office at the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education has now informed me that the Hathaway School plans to remain open. Clearly, this is an attempt to subvert the regulations in order to obtain the charter. I would strongly suggest that if the charter were granted, the Hathaway School would soon close in these difficult financial times. Finding money to spend on private elementary schools with excellent public schools available is difficult for Lynn families. That considered, along with the possibility that many of the current Hathaway students will seek and gain admission to the charter version of the school, will precipitate decreasing enrollment and quite possibly force the closing of the Hathaway School within a relatively short period after a charter is granted. And the remaining section of the regulation states that the private school, if to rebut the presumption that the private school is seeking public funding, the applicant group must establish facts sufficient to determine that funding is not the primary reason. And in making a determination, the department will compare governance, management, and other characteristics of the school. My response basically, little has changed from the original 2009 charter application to the current application. The governance, management, and other characteristics of the Hathaway School are identical to that of the proposed charter school. Although the application is poorly written and fraught with egregiously false statements about the Lynn Public Schools in the city of Lynn, the writing and submission of the Lynn Preparatory Charter School application is not what I am objecting to. I object to the fact that if the application were granted, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and the board would be subverting the law. I feel strongly that many private schools throughout the state will be watching this particular charter approval. If this charter is granted, the procedures followed by the Hathaway School will provide other private and parochial schools with a step-by-step -step process to follow in order to procure public funding for private schools. I urge the department to consider the ramifications of an approval in this case simply because viable applications do not exist does not mean that illegal applications should be granted. My, my apologies, I, I, I signed his name maybe in violation of uh, policy. He, he's probably stuck in traffic and is not going to make so it to we'll, late. We'll, we'll, we'll hold. Uh, Absolutely. He can, he can come back. 
Uh, Mark Hathaway. I want to thank the uh, panel again uh, very much for another opportunity to speak here. I'm going to start, I don't want to spend a lot of time um, but, um, with rebuttal to, uh, I'll just make uh, actual statements of, you know, the prep to private conversion that's been uh, addressed. Uh, it is the only opposition that's been presented so far. That the Hathaway School will <coughs> remain open. What the Lynn uh, Public Schools uh, and the people uh, opponents of it have not really uh, factored in here is the demand in Lynn is great enough that not all the kids are going to get picked in the lottery if the Lynn Preparatory Charter School is granted a child. They are in denial. The school system is failing. The parents are here to discuss it, to uh, come at a public hearing and state. If we were to hold the lottery for grades as proposed, kindergarten through seven, I would be willing to guarantee that we would have well over the 320, uh, the 280 applicants to start the school, and there would be enough people who, again, like the people you've heard, that would not be willing to send their schools, uh, their children, to a failing school district. Again, as Ms. Goldberg has mentioned, after uh, we sat before the uh, in the. February meeting of the uh, DESE board, and the uh, same opposition was was uh, proposed then. Uh, we found out three weeks later that two of the schools that we would, um, a significant amount of children would be drawn from, are failing and were put on probation, on the state's probation. The Lynn Public School, uh, the Hathaway School, is one <coughs> quarter the size of what the Lynn Preparatory Child School is. The physical location would have to be totally different. Every child who entered would have to go through a lottery system, unlike the Hathaway School where the parents have to walk up and rather than send their children to the Lynn Public Schools, pay money to go. It is a totally different entity. Yes, it has a proposed director. It set up a private school. The the Hathaway School will be able to exist on its own if Dr. Sivitries and myself go and become admi administrators at the Lynn Preparatory Child School. Uh, so that, you know, I, again, I'd like to go on record uh, that I'll be very brief. The difference in the reasons why these parents want to attend the Lynn Preparatory Child School are very simple. A failing school district, which has some remedies for that, extended day. As you heard, smaller class sizes that the gentleman so aptly put will help bridge this gap. Uh, a rigorous curriculum, a individualized learning plan, a campus of care. As Ms. Goldberg said, a, a, a culture that will foster not only the, the students that are underperforming and bring them up, but students that are doing very well, help them excel. This is not a, a, a school specifically designed, the Lynn Preparatory Child School, to cater to just failing students to bring them up. It's to make every student the best they can be, unlike what's happening in Lynn today. Okay, thank you, thank you very much.